Hi, this is Eric Bordelais from Chateau de Hauteville in Charchigny, and you are listening to Cider Chat. Episode 172. Hello and welcome to Cider Chat. My name is Rhea Wincoller, and I am the producer and cider MC of this weekly podcast, where we speak with makers, cider enthusiasts, and folks within the cider trade from around the world. This week, we are featuring a visit to Eric Bordelais' domain based in Charchenay, Normandy, France. We visited Eric in 2018 on the Totally Cider Tour, and I'll be highlighting some of the narrative of that very special visit to his cidery and home. There'll be more on that, but first, a bit of news out and about in Ciderville. For all those regular listeners who subscribe to Cider Chat, welcome back. And if you're new to the Cider Podcast, well, let me tell you that the way it's set up is the first section here. We're going to talk a little bit about what's happening throughout the landscape of Ciderville, which is both a physical and virtual place, all the little spots around the world where people are working with palms. And then we go into the main feature. But before we get there, I'm going to be sharing with you, coming right up, a cider competition that is really key for any commercial maker based in New England or New York State. The Big E is an annual New England fair, and it takes place in Springfield, Massachusetts. And last year, I had the opportunity to judge at the cider competition. This is a new competition that they've started. It's been a couple years now in the making. And on June 8th, I will be judging once again this year. And it is specific to New England and New York producers. And if you're in that region, I really want to encourage you to submit your entries because one, there's not that many entries. So you have a very good chance of making a splash in all the best terms. And you're also competing against the folks kind of in the know of this competition who are quite good. In fact, last year's top award went to West County Cider. Uh, that is based in Coleraine, Massachusetts. Uh, who doesn't know about West County, right? That is uh, the first cidery to really, I think, kick off the cider revolution, r- revival, whatever the heck you want to call it, in the U.S., if not worldwide, in so many ways. So that's where the spark came from. They won with their Redfield Cider. That's Field Maloney. You can listen to Field Maloney. He was on episode one for this here podcast. It's absolutely worth it getting the historical perspective of both West County and cider in the U.S. So that takes place on June 8th. I'm going to put a link in the show notes. The actual entry form for getting your entry in is May 15th, bottle delivery no later than May 29th. Now, there is a couple things to know. One, it's a $40 entry fee. So that's, you know, there's always entry fee. But the cool thing is, in September, when the fair actually takes place, your ciders, if you're in the award-winning area, you get to be there pouring. And there are so many people, it's like a million people go through the Beaky Fair. So the reach is huge. So think about that if you are in New England or New York, the Big E Fair, the competition Coming up, you want to get your entry form in by May 15th. Look for a link in the show notes or just Google Big E Cider Competition. You might want to put in Wine Competition too because there's a lot of wines that get submitted. There's actually dual judges that day, both cider judges like myself and then wine judges. I think this is a great opportunity. It's not that well known and yet, again, 
the reach is absolutely huge. They just built a brand new building to showcase all the award winners during this. It's like a week long fair. It's not like a one day fair. It's like a week long fair. It's, it's magnificent. I've gone to it ever since I was a kid. You know, they have cows and goats and sheep and all that fun stuff, amusement park, a Bavarian like beer garden, all kinds of jazz and the winners of the cider competition. Again, look for the links in this here episode 173. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Lee Reeve, uh, you are something. He he gave me this box of chocolates. It's called a Calvados, and you might have seen this some time in your life. These fun little chocolate treats that have liquid in the center, and it is Calvados. Well, that's what this is, and it's a cool little box. It's yellow and beautiful big letter saying Calvados, and then a glass. Obviously, it must be a glass of Calvados. And then two apples and chocolate. And, oh my God! I, I, you're you're killing me here, Lee. I I just keep on kind of kicking these back one at a time. And if you don't know who Lee Reeve is, he is the person behind Insider Japan, the one and only bilingual magazine that's giving you updates from all around the world and Japan, which is a really hot spot for a cider hub. And thanks in part a big part to Lee and all his work there. Uh, there is some cool people in Japan, uh, well, millions of them actually, uh, and more and more just getting turned on to, to cider. So we're going to be coming up with a episode with Lee shortly, but oh man, every time, you know, I'm just kind of sitting in between these little breaks. All of a sudden I grab one of these little candies here. Who knew you'd get like a little Calvado street from Japan. That's just so fascinating to me. Okay, I'm going to have to go have some water so I can keep on talking. Maybe I'll have another little Calvados treat. You're going to be in the UK in August, aren't you? You're going to be attending the Ross Cider Festival. It's taking place August 30th to September 1st. This is a three-day event. They have a number of different ticket options. I think they are still open. I imagine once word gets out and folks are actually paying attention to their vacation calendar, or as they would say in Europe, your holiday calendar. I always like that a little bit more than vacation. You know, in, in Europe, they call going away as we would in the U.S., a holiday. It's kind of like your vacation is always a holiday. It has a nice swing to it. Anyways, I digress. This is a three-day event. They have camping in the orchard. This is like kind of like the best thing in the world to happen to a cider aficionado to be able to camp in the orchard. So check it out. It's a really affordable event to get to. There's going to be music. You know, you're going to be surrounded by the most magnificent people. And it's put on by Ross on Y, Cider and Perry. And there's all these amazing other producers in that region hanging out. Oh, what a time. So set your date, get it on the calendar and look it up. Ross Cider Festival, get your tickets. If not this year, think about next year. I'm definitely thinking about next year. Hooey. So uh, do that and just imagine in the orchard, popping back little chocolates, maybe drinking some good local brandy, sipping on some perry, sipping on cider. I mean, it's just going to be palm. Mm. Okay, I have chocolate and palm on my, my mind right now. Nothing like a little bit of sugar to keep you going. Hey, when we come back, we're going to go right to the main feature talking with Eric Bordelais, that little bit of narrative that we had on the tour to his domain.
Last week's episode was called Americans in Paris, Cider Tourists Speak. And that was snapshots from the folks on the Totally Cider Tour to Normandy, France in 2018. We were there the last week of September because I knew that the apples and pears would be ripe for the picking and we could taste, taste what's going on in that landscape like nobody's business. And of course, we were meeting the most fantastic makers. And one of those makers uh, you heard spoken about on last week's episode, and that was Eric Bordelais, which I knew a lot of folks are really looking forward to meet Eric because he's he's world famous. There's no doubt about it. The guy is world famous. And partly because he is a world-famous sommelier. He worked in Paris for many years and really it set him on like kind of rock star notoriety in that way. And then he left Paris to go back to his family's farm and begin cider making. Well, that was many years ago. And over the past 10 years, Eric kind of disappeared a bit because he wasn't traveling out in the world. I mean, people still knew about him, still sought him out, still wanted to kind of meet him. But he became, in some ways, rather uh, reclusive in terms of not flying, uh, partly because, well, not partly, but because he lost his very dear friend, Didier Dagnou, who was a renowned winemaker, uh, specifically working with Sauvignon Blanc. So Eric is full in on the winemaking world. And you're going to hear a little bit about that because this is what really informs him. And it's it's a lot of his peers that he hangs with, not necessarily the cider makers in the same way that you might see in your own spot of Ciderville. And part of the Totally Cider Tour is was and is, because we're doing the same thing coming up this September, is to go and meet Eric. And we had the fine privilege of being able to go to his domain and to both walk around the property, walk over to the cidery, and then have a special tour into the castle that he's been rebuilding. So you're going to hear little glimpses along the way, and I'll try to narrate as I can. But I wanted to give you this taste of the experience that we do in Normandy to share with you this fine maker, to to get to know this man behind this kind of big brand who's a, a really dear, dear, dear person. I'm quite, quite fond of him. There's no doubt about that. And the way I got to meet um, Eric was I had done an interview with Randall Graham, who's based in Santa Cruz, California, and he is the man behind the brand Bonnie Dune Vineyard. And Randall is that same kind of artistic flair as Eric and as Didier was, and they were all uh, friends. And it was because of Randall, my meeting of him, that one, I got to know a little bit about Medlars and bloodying Medlars. So you might want to check that, that conversation out with Randall Graham. I'll put a link in the show notes. And it's because of Randall that Eric even took the time originally a uh, what's like four years ago, to meet with me. Uh, He doesn't necessarily do that. He doesn't open up his cidery to the public in the same way. Some makers are more accessible than others. And as Al was commenting on last week's episode, he approaches it as like artistry. Uh, The art is creating that perfect blend, that perfect apple. So we were at the domain and uh, we were kind of waiting for him. He wasn't there. And so we all unloaded off our motor co- coach. It was just an absolutely beautiful day, as it typically is at the last week of September. A lot of buzzing going around at the cidery. And the group was down by the tasting room. And I had just walked up to the motor coach. And out in the distance, it was kind of like from a movie, out in the distance, you saw this like black car driving this like, you know, uh, fast car and the dust is like kicking up behind it and like who is it I'm like oh man that's Eric and uh you know you just feel so special when the guy like kind of pulls up stops his car you know and all the dust kind of like you know catches up to the car and he comes out of the door it's kind of like MacGyver coming out of the door comes up and does that kind of classic greeting of all the friends you know uh, a peck on the cheek on, on on both sides and it was a hello I just 
it was just so great seeing him. Then he, I went on to the motor coach to get whatever I needed. Then he drove down to the group, and we begin there where he was greeting everybody in that very special way that all the makers did when we arrived on the scene. So let's all uh, grab a glass and enjoy uh, this visit with Eric Bordelais and the fantastic group on the Totally Sided Tour to Normandy, France in 2018. <laughs> like to know what everyone is doing in his job. Okay, or, okay. I don't know if you don't Well, mo uh, everyone I think has tried to make cider for the most part, I, I like, like at, at home. I like the word try. Try, <laughs> try. Well, you know. Yeah. Right. I still try. Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and so we began that conversation as we began most conversations with all the producers that we visited in Normandy by introducing ourselves and telling them about our work. And then we moved behind the castle to speak about terroir. So the terroir, it's imp uh, uh, interesting to know about the, the soil, the terroir. Uh, that's kind of rocks, okay? So he's going that's over to uh, touching a, a stone rock right now, talking about terroir. The only schist. So, all trees from this underground 200 meters until Donfrey. It, it's very interesting. And uh, I always watch the whole house where I, I see an oak shed. I, uh, first, I check the, the, the whole house to see if it's its mixture. It's more mm. complex. The only things I like to say to young people who want to make cider is to check around in your countryside where what, what kind of apple be adapted in this area. Because for me, it, it's crazy to, I hope people won't make a mistake like in wine to put Pinot Noir, to put Cabernet, to put some famous grapes. Uh, I think uh, you have to become paysan, you understand? Farmer and to, to observe. That, that's a, uh, it's the best way to, to make a, a personal cider or, or, or uh, who represent your terroir, your area. Keep your, your personality with your uh, ecosystem, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Or you can create a, a, an, an ecosystem as well. I don't know in Texas, but uh, Texas is big yeah, anyway. Mm -hmm. But uh, you have to be, uh, comment on dit, Malin? Uh, a genius. Ah, c'est génial, le génial, le non, like c'est pas le... Malicious. Oui, c'est ça, ouais. Yeah, c'est yeah, yeah. <laughs> mal, malin, il faut, il faut juste, euh, voilà. And, uh, curious, you... it could be like curious, okay. also curious enough to, to understand what kind of... And I think it's uh, the palette to make the difference as well. The palette, taste all the time, practice, practice, taste the fruit, taste the different condition, everything. But, okay, but if, if, if people don't have like the bitter sharp and the bitter sweet, and you know in the U.S. we just have the the eating apples, you know, and we're looking to France and bringing over French varieties. And what do you think about that? Is that time well spent? I mean, they're they're growing in in America now, or do we? Uh, yes, but I'm not. Uh, I don't want to give some lesson about this, but. Uh, uh, Maybe you will create some new disease, I don't know. Uh, if you have the chance to be in area where is uh, arboriculture, and when I mean when I mean arboriculture is the trees. What kind of trees, what kind of... Uh, you have to be, um, uh, comment on dit, accompagné. So you have a, a kind of, you have to work with nature. You don't have to influence the nature, but Too the nature much. like voilà. you are always on the side, well, right next to nature, no, mm -hmm. like hand by hand. Voilà, c'est ça, it's stupid. Yeah, um, I'm getting old as well, uh, so I can say that many, now, but... Uh, He's not that old. He's not that old. <laughs> it's easy. Mm -hmm. uh, voilà, anyway. <laughs> so, so that's philosophy, but we will talk tonight about yes, it. Yes, that sounds want. good. Okay. Are, are you so deep here? So we started over in front of the house, and now we're walking the over to the cider. Uh, 
what that earth is all about. The soil, what's going on with the rocks, the earth, that, that tradition of biodynamic farming and not separating yourself from that. A lot of construction here. They're really building it up. Bonjour. There was a bit more to the conversation. I'm just taking out little snippets, ones that I think are really key for all of us to hear. Uh, one piece around terroir. Eric is always looking down on the earth before he looks up, uh, talking about if he's looking at properties, thinking about maybe getting some pears or, or apples from a a farm. He doesn't just look at the orchard. He's looking at the landscape, looking at the rocks, because in France, it's so critical, especially around pears. You know, they, the pear trees really like that kind of what they call a schist, a, a certain type of stone. Or argillette, argillette is a, a, a kind of a rock there. And this really informs him in his own cider making. And then that kind of piece around looking at those of us who are not in that part of the world, what are our apples? What trees work well in our environment? And that encouragement, that same encouragement that we heard from Jérôme de Pont on using the varieties that we already have there. I think there is so much wisdom there. We bring in a lot of apples from outside of the country. No doubt they make a great cider, but never forsaking what your own surroundings have. That is a key piece here. Next, we're walking over to the cidery, and you're going to be hearing the door open and people kind of gazing in to the cidery. So we're up above it. There is a clear door that he slides open, and you're looking down into the cidery because it's it's really designed to be uh, utilized in a way that makes the movement of the apples or the pears into the crusher or the scratcher, if you will, as easy as possible, um, decreasing the amount or need for labor. So here it's uh, the voyage. So I forgot to mention. There's a scratcher, the grinder. Voilà, yeah, so it's the gens comprennent, je pense. So uh, we take, take the, the mush, the, the, the liquid, yeah. huh? the mush, yeah. and after we press, scratcher, stainless we, steel, we, um, macerate. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, it's we not create across it because it depends on the sun. Too much power, there's no need to exit. Jump from the outside. So you want to go in there and see? Uh, and then I've been here before. Go ahead. So this is where the trucks come up and people drop it in. And it's like one long room now since I was last here. And the tanks are still on either side. They have the uh, cooling jackets around it. It's not a variable tank. This way is just really great automation. It goes into the scratcher from outside, it drops down into like a lower level. It's like a reduction line from there. Eric's saying that he started with the old fashioned press by hand, like many of us. It took him 12 hours to be doing that pressing. It's really cool about the setup of this farm, which is like a uh, shed roof top is that the door into the cidery is clear. You can look into it from the outside. Not that he opens it to public or anything, but it's a nice setup for the cidery in that way. That conversation there went on for a bit where the folks are able to ask him some technical questions. He was able to share some of his information on how he does some of the, the fining with the cider uh, that initial pressing, what he's looking for, how he is managing it. And that will be posted to the Cider Chat Patreon page. In the meanwhile, we're now going to head over to the tasting room where he brought out a whole bevy of ciders and pore and one very special bottle of something that I did not know he was making. And we'll be sharing that with you. <laughs> <laughs> no control. Oh, it's uh, a good sound. Most of the time I start by the sweet one. Because when I am in, uh, most of the time in, when in testing, I am with many wine, and I like people when they change uh, 
uh, to have the fruit. So with the with the do it's better. They know they have apple here. Yeah, yeah. Fruit yeah. forward. That's fruit why. Forward. Because if it's brewed sometimes, uh, far you can see the color. Uh, don't hesitate to 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 put the 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 vat de jeter, huh? Because to yeah. degusté, uh, c'est mieux. And I want you to taste uh, to be concentrated quite quick enough. Mm -hmm. Want to recuve and after argelé, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. I should have. Better. So uh, sixteen as well. Sixteen demi sec. So it means brut temps. The same. So the same, the same uh, juice, but yeah. ferment it two more months, okay? Mm -hmm. oh. Ferment it two more months. Voilà. Oh. Most of the time, two, two months. Huh? Two more months in bottle or? No, 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 so you can feel much more acidity and the bit bitterness yes. of the tannin, right. of course, yeah. because there is less sugar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now the gastro gastronomic peri, 16. Because 17 is too close, it's difficult to serve now. Uh, I prefer to serve the 16. The granite is evolved very slowly. It's very oxido reduction most of the time. That's mean not oxidized, but the, the reverse, oxido reduction. Yeah. Because acidity, minerality, and uh, uh, all trees, so it's getting old like paving, <coughs> need time, mm -hmm. wow. like they did. And I prefer that way. I prefer that way because it's reverse way, but oxidized, it's finished. And you can see it, it's not so much charm than the authentic, but it's background. Mm -hmm. You have to move, yeah. you have to know, to research. Wow. Uh, Small yeah. one. Yeah. It's crazy. It's creamy. Well, yeah. It's, it's so more creamy. Yeah, the nose. The nose is great. And that's a, mm -hmm. now what year is that again? That's 16. a 20... 16. 16. Mm -hmm. uh, tonight as well, we have different vintage, okay? Okay. Uh, after this, ah, yes. Because I said granite is evolved slowly, so... Two more vintage, to, sorry, one more vintage here, and tonight another vintage. But here I have 11. Whoa. I hope I should serve another vintage of Argelette. But uh, anyway, if you meet in different seller or different distributor, the guy is not sure about uh, to sell a vintage older, buy it. I suggest, I suggest to buy it because they, they don't care sometimes too much. You can, they don't think it can age. age I think uh, if you saw some, I think I was quite okay. The recipe from 1999. Uh -huh. Nine, 2005 was not so good. Maybe 10% of the bottle was not so good because mm. I changed the bottle machine in uh -huh. 2005 uh -huh. and I get trouble in the machine. Mm. And uh, I didn't uh, two years to discover where was the trouble. Mm -hmm. mm. The trouble was the the, the, the soudures were not made. It was a jointer. Uh, you know when well, you join It was not polish. So uh -huh. it was the bacteria was so the, inside. Uh, yeah. So when, you, when you're putting the plug in. So right. Had, had, so uh, like like tri-clover wasn't... Uh, yeah. You know when you join the thing, you put it up. The seal. The seal, yeah. What it is and what it comes from. So the... Here really wants uh, now to have your uh, like full attention, attention because he really wants to see like what like what do you guess about this one? <laughs> What's in it? Okay. It doesn't uh -oh. have a label on it. So, yeah. So no, we have to work. All right. We have to work. Yeah. Yeah. Go to work. You've been in Normandy all week oh. now. Oh, got to clean. Clean. <laughs> this is the I should clean, but I don't have too much this produce, so that's why. You, but after the Paris, no, mm -hmm. too much mm -hmm. trouble. Doesn't mean change. After the cycle is different. C'est mon dernier délire. C'est si tu peux traduire ça. <laughs> it's his last, um, let's say, fanciness. Mm. Last one? It's last fanciness. Last or uh, last? The last one. Last. Yeah. 
a fanciness, like you wanted to create something a little bit uh, fan, well, funny. Fun. So this oh, yeah, fanciful, yeah, yeah, yeah. fanciful, fanciful, yeah, fanciful. fanciful. Yeah, but yes. it's, it, it used to be produced, made in. The, okay, I'll say it in French. It's a product of the 15th century, which was made in the 1950s, in the Maine. Jusqu'en 1950. Ok, so this product used to be uh, like a local one, like especially from the 15th century, and they used to produce it until to the uh, up to the 50s, actually. Wow. and then they stopped. Ah. Wow. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Just cherry or something. Homemade. So someone said. Yeah. Grapes. Right? Yeah. Everyone agree? Grapes. Sorry? Grapes? No. no. Okay. It's still a rosacea. There's a taste sour. there. Rosacea? Nice. Cherry? I don't know. It's a little bit No, natural. I think it smells like pear, though. It starts. When I started off. Fresh pear. There is quince, neff, pear, apple. Uh, this. And the last one? It's called different name maybe. Corn. Corn? Corn. 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 With an M. Like yeah, C-O-M. Yeah. So, service C-O-R-M. tree. C-O-R-M. Oh, crab apple. Oh, crab apple. Crab apple. No, no, no crab apple. No. no. Someone in North Carolina said crab apple, but I know what is crab apple. It's very, right. very, very small, but mm-hmm. yes, it's no, it's uh, it's the same family, but it's it's not a uh, crab apple. Oh, okay. It's, it's corn. Well, okay. So that's the blanc de blanc. That's a pure. Okay. Right. That's corn. It's one of the variety of this. It's corn. Ah. And it it have the skin like maybe mirabel, but it's the same. It's rosacé. It's called corn. Yeah. Service tree. Tu sais qu'il m'a dit la traduction. Je ne sais même pas que c'est existant en français, en fait, c'est quoi Nous avons cette corne, donc vous avez le poiré, de la poire à poiré, vous avez dit, de la poirier. Vous avez le cormé, de la corne, de la cormier. Mm-hmm. Le cormier. Mais vous avez dit aussi le sorbus domestica. Vous avez beaucoup plus d'informations avec le sorbus domestica, parce que le sud de la Loire-Vallée, c'est le sorbus, le sorbus domestica. Il y a une Sicile, Sicile, Sicile. Corsica, Czechy, right. uh, Spierling in Germany. Mm. It's like I sent a bottle to Andreas. Good, good. And see, yeah. Because they always said it's impossible to make only with corn. And I said I tried huh? because I met two people, 95 years and 85 years, old, who said in the past, in the, in the farm, we was huge the cormet for the beverage, uh, for the special uh, yeah. party, yeah. the cormet. Yeah. So it's tradition from the main. Huh. From the main. Yeah. Oh, the main. main. That's why I'm talking at the beginning about the main. Yeah. And I, that's just uh-huh. the first month, because it's partly for December, but the labels t- took me six months to do, because Beautiful. I was not happy with the, the, <laughs> the print that guy and uh, not uh, happy so I change everyone <laughs> and I choose mm, so one nice. six Very months nice. to take this so it, you have it could be so I meet not, uh, 10 variety here there is eight but this I, I found two more varieties this vintage oh, wow. so that's one of party Oh. It, 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 there is different variety and the, the skin is very very fine mm-hmm. um, it's very astringent mm-hmm. uh-huh. but you have to be in a perfect time and most of the time they eat it bled uh-huh. we, right. bled. we know what bled is voilà. mm-hmm. yeah, the yeah. nef is most of the time is bled and uh, this to eat it's nice to have bled but to make the cormet you have to be in the right time before bled uh, before yeah, I think so yeah but okay. uh, it means it, it's fermenting from the inside. It's already right. starting to ferment on the inside. It's it's like a pear, juice. like a pear when you open up a pear and it's brown on your side. So the balance, it could be uh, most of nine, last year. If it's fermented completely, it's nine percent. So that's why it's interesting for me because it's between cider and, and wine, yeah. and uh, it's nine percent. But I stop fermentation at six percent here. Six mm-hmm. percent. So you have some residual sugar. Right. I, I have exactly do the same job like the berry and the cider, but with corn. And I hit the pink cider. Some mix different things. I like like to mix 
each family, but never between. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand? What is, what is nef? Nef is another word. Uh, nef, how uh, do you Nef? It's a tree. Um, it's the same family, it's Rosacé, there is five. Rosacé? Yeah, Rosacé. Yeah. 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 Nef, uh, I don't know. Okay. 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 Mm. So that's Medlar. Oh, Medlar! 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 Oh! Okay. And come... Uh, ah, oui, c'est ça. Yeah, yeah. 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 Medlar. There you go, Rhea. Okay, so to, uh, to make juice with this, I didn't heard any story about this. So, I like this because it should be a big uh, beverage, an old beverage. Mm -hmm. There is a story. And I'm happy to, to be at a, officiellement to have a label on it and to, to, to sell it. How exciting. So, yeah. Very good, very good. So, Can we get some of that today? Can we no. buy that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking, but uh, it's oh, difficult. Okay. Uh, that means... Uh, four, four, forty euros the bottle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. wow. Because it's so complicated to yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sounds like complicated. to farm the cormier, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. to for the, the work and everything is complicated. And most of time the trees are so big, very because I plant two hectares and a half, but uh, yeah, the yeah, they just start, yeah, and mm -hmm. take one hundred years to become a, uh, to become a duke. Uh, and it's got well, only 350 trees left around uh, those uh, 150 ki kilometers. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of difficult. You gotta run around. But anyway, uh, sorry? You have to run around to collect them all. <laughs> of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah. So, any question? Okay. You're on Beautiful. Uh, flight time? Beautiful. Yeah, I have a so. question. Huh? Not so bad. Okay. Bye. Do you have any other advice about aging, aging ciders? It's not very common to do that in the U.S. Uh, I think you will, after, during the meal, it will be interesting to have your opinion about this. But mm -hmm. Advice, what's that mean? C'est quoi déjà un conseil? Pour faire vieillir? To work well, to have uh, many good decisions. Yeah, for your variety, yeah. or your balance, because it's a balance who, who can make, and your technique, or your work, you can make the product aging. Uh, if you have a good balance at the beginning, you can age. Of course, some vintage are better to age, some different vintage, mm -hmm. but it's interesting to have vintage who are not interesting to age too long, because after three years, it's open, it's, it's very uh, nice to, to taste. Uh, tonight I choose a, a vintage, a rustic vintage, quite close, uh, a long time, but with a, the dish it would be interesting to have, I could choose something more more uh, charming, but with the dish it won't be so interesting, I think uh, I choose yeah. someone. So take, take care, N -n -n don't uh, hesitate, hesitate, mm -hmm. hesitate. To, to oxygen, uh -huh. uh -huh. uh, with uh, a aerate. glass, like a wine, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. don't care about the, the gas. You, you mm -hmm. discover the gas is not the main things mm -hmm. in those bottles because it's like a creme of three or four kilos maximum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it's too much, that's a mask to, to do your flavor, mm -hmm. to the aroma. Voilà. But to age, um, a, a brut can age as well, but it's not interesting to, to age more than five years. The sweet one is not, uh, the maybe, it can age, but it's not, it's a sample of produce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It has to have, we have, you sh we have to, the first three years to have the fruit, it's not interesting to have the fruit of the apple, of course, or the pear. <coughs> Can we buy? Yeah, but uh, not too much. <laughs> not too much. <laughs> Not too much. No, but you fly, or you don't have too much room. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, we came here with extra suitcases. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In the tasting room with Eric Bordelais, one of Paris's famous sommeliers, being able to be served by him to talk and discuss about the ciders. There was quite a bit there. I actually edited out a lot because there was a lot of pouring and a lot of cider and pore that we were drinking. And then that final product, the first time, he only made a thousand bottles of this, and that is the corm. That is spelled C O R. M E, I pronounce it as Corme, and it is exquisite, absolutely exquisite. 
Uh, the more scientific name, if you will, is Sorbus domesticus. And it is, it's really something. So his passion for it, uh, being told by folks in their 90s, if you caught that, that this was a, a drink that was around for a long time. Indeed, it should be made. And indeed, he is making that uh, really the only producer in the world that I know who is doing that commercially. And to be able to bring some of that product home, everyone there got a bottle of that. And uh, on the way out, he was kind enough to give me a bottle. Uh, what what a treasure of an experience. We went back to the hotel that evening, had a little bit of a rest as we could, and then <laughs> continued to have an exquisite Michelin star meal and drink more with Eric of his products of his cider and pore. And then he was kind of testing us. He brought out an ice cider and we had to try to figure out what it was. We didn't know it was a nice cider. <laughs> what a way to have a week. So thank you, Eric, so much. I know that we are so in debt to your experience. You and all the producers in Normandy, what a fantastic time. Sider tour to Normandy, France was so much fun. Guess what? We are doing it again. It's going to take place the last week of September 2019. That is the 22nd to the 28th. Seven nights in Normandy, six cider dinners, one dinner on your own, all lunches, all breakfasts, a night overnight in Mont Saint Michel, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. A visit to Ithrat, which is uh, the White Cliffs of Ithrat, world famous, absolutely gorgeous seaside town surrounded by cliffs. Uh, you kind of, it's like going into like a movie scene and stops at Omaha Beach, the famous Omaha Beach, to uh, raise a glass to those who gave their lives in service during World War II. Then we'll also be stopping at the Musée du Poré. And yet there's still time for yourself to just walk about and enjoy and smell the cider and drink it too. <laughs> We're going to be meeting some fantastic makers, many of which we visited last year, including Eric Bordelais. We'll be doing the same thing with Eric, visiting his domain and then having a dinner in the evening. The early bird special for that cider tour ends March 31st. So it's a small window of time. But guess what? You could sign up saying, you know, I really want to go. I'm feeling a little tentative, uh, but I don't want to miss out. You have 30 days from the point that you signed up to get a full refund on your deposit uh, in case something happens. But in the meanwhile, don't miss it. This is a time to get in on that early bird special because the euro does go up. And as such, I have to... Uh, work with that too. That's part of this tour. So come along with me and some great folks who have already signed up for the tour, coming from all over the map to drink cider, enjoy pore, explore Cavados and Pamon in Normandy, September 2019. Just go to the Totally Cider page at ciderchat.com. And if you are a patron of Cider Chat, look for that bonus clip with Eric Bordelais speaking about his cider making techniques right outside the Cider House. That's about a 20-25 minute extra bonus audio clip going to you. You too can become a patron if you aren't already by going to the Cider Chat Patreon page. You'll find a link to that on the show notes for this here episode 172 or just Google Cider Chat Patreon.
That's spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N. And for those of you out there in Ciderville who are coming along with me to Monterey Bay on April 12th and 13th, well, the Betty Jane is going to be waiting for you. We're going to be riding in style with this tricked out school bus complete with a cooler and couches, uh, which is going to be fun because we have this very short distance to go to all the locations because that's pretty much how I like to design a tour. Uh, just keep the driving to the minimum so you could spend most of the time with the makers and in the orchard. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Oh, we, I've been working on the food situation because we have some people with special dietary needs, which, you know, goes a figure. A lot of folks are attracted to cider because of that. Uh, it really meets that gluten-free aspect. Uh, just talked to Melinda, one of the key gluten-free bakeries in the area, and she is going to be setting all su- all of us up with some amazing sandwiches to meet everyone's needs. We're going to be uh, having a chef Sarouge. She's going to be cooking us our cider dinner that will be held outdoors at Soquel Cider. We have a number of makers coming to that. Uh, Tata Laura Everett, the award-winning cider maker at Soquel Cider. And, um, you know, Laura's history, she lived in Napa Valley. So when she said, Ria, how many glasses do you want? Uh, I was a little shy at first saying, uh, I don't know, Laura, you know, like I like to see a lot of glasses on the table, you know, three or four. And her reply was just so nonchalant. She goes, Ria, I grew up in Napa with a wine family. I'm used to glasses on the table. So we're going to have glasses on the table. Uh, We're going to be topping that off at the end with a very special dessert that is also palm related and just, mm enjoying Monterey Bay. I just can't wait to see everybody there. The the folks at Santa Cruz Cider Company, I just adore their ciders. Tanuki Cider, visiting Five Mile Orchard, just a landmark location. Uh, Apple Storage, historical site. You got to listen to the conversation with Jake Mann. We're going to be seeing Jake. We're going to be tasting, doing a vertical, horizontal tasting of Newtown Pippins with Ryder Ranch. That's crazy. You're going to get to meet Peter and Aaron Cerventi, who are kind of new onto the cider scene, but really committed. They have their own orchard. That's where we're going to be uh, bringing our bag lunches and hanging out in their orchard that day, checking out their cider. Pretty interesting there. Very exciting. And uh, let me see, there's somebody. Oh, yeah. And John Martinelli. I think you might have heard about him. Uh, That is S. Martinelli and Company, the oldest cider making family in the U.S., uh, been involved in the apple juice business, actually started as a cider maker in 1868, and producing amazing apple juice, amazing cider. Uh, stopped for a while and then kicked out for their 150th anniversary, the 1868 Accessionable Cider, kind of an indu- introductory cider, but still having that Newtown Pippin profile, which I'm digging. So we get to meet John Martinelli. He's going to be leading the, t- the tour that day. Uh, so I'm talking about Normandy, but I'm, I'm really hankering for Monterey. There's so much in between, so much good stuff to celebrate in Ciderville. And that's exactly the place that I like hanging out with you. Thanks for listening and showing up every week. It means so much to me, Ciderville. I wouldn't be able to do it without your support and good cheer. May your cup always be full. This is Rio Wincaller signing off for now. Looking forward to seeing you in Ciderville. Going up, going up. Yeehaw!